Good afternoon, everyone. You're very welcome, and thank you for joining this webinar today. I'm Alice, and I'm going to take you through the implications of Brexit for transportable pressure equipment. And what I want to, sorry, what I want to focus on today is information that's been published by the European uh, Commission on uh, transportable pressure equipment. So when the UK notified its intention to withdraw from the EU, the Commission issued over 100 notices to help stakeholders to prepare for Brexit. And they started updating those notices earlier this year after the withdrawal agreement came into force to reflect the changes that are going to occur at the end of the transition period on the 31st of December this year. And there are two notices in particular that are relevant to the Transportable Pressure Equipment Directive. And what I want to do today is to summarise what they say. And there are three main areas that I'm going to cover. First of all, I'll talk about the legal situation at the end of the uh, transition period. I'll then move on to the uh, relevant separation provisions of the withdrawal agreement. And I'll finish by talking about the rules that will apply in Northern Ireland under the protocol on Ireland, Northern Ireland. Now, before I do that, I want to introduce some of the terms that are used throughout this webinar. So, to start off with, ADR stands for the European Agreement Concerning the International Carriage of Dangerous Goods by Road. And essentially, the ADR lays out the rules for the safe transport of dangerous goods, and that includes dangerous goods that are carried in transportable pressure equipment. There are currently 52 contracting parties to the ADR, so it very much extends beyond uh, Europe at this stage. And Ireland and the UK are both contracting parties to the ADR, and that's something that won't change with Brexit. The definition of transportable pressure equipment comes from the ADR, and it can be uh, pressure receptacles, their valves, and other accessories. And that includes cylinders, drums, and gas cartridges in accordance with Chapter 6.2 of ADR. It also includes uh, tanks, battery vehicles or wagons, and multiple element gas containers, their valves, and other accessories. And that includes fixed tanks and tank containers in accordance with Chapter 6.2 of ADR. And transportable pressure equipment is used to transport class two gases under ADR, which means that they can be flammable, non-flammable, non-toxic, or toxic. There are two directives that I'll refer to during the webinar that are implemented under our national regulations. The first directive I'll talk about is the Transportable Pressure Equipment Directive, or TPED for short, and the reference for that is 2010-35 EU. I'll also refer to the Directive on the Inland Transport of Dangerous Goods, 2008-68 EC, and that directive refers to the ADR. So these two directives are very much connected. A second area I want to introduce is notified bodies. Now, notified bodies are essentially inspection bodies that are accredited to carry out various tasks. So, for example, conformity assessment would be done before TPE is placed on the market, and the notified body would issue a certificate of conformity um, for that work. And then once the TPE is on the market, in order to continue to make it available on the market, it needs to be inspected by a notified body. And depending on the type of TPE that you have, that could be a periodic inspection, an intermediate inspection, or an exceptional check. And the notified body would issue a report of inspection um, for that activity. Reassessment of conformity is something that would be done where TPE is being brought in line with the current directive, and the notified body would issue a certificate for that. Pie marking is something that is applied to TPE, for example, when it meets the conformity assessment or the reassessment of conformity. And essentially, it's the equivalent of the CE mark, which applies to other industrial products. Now, under the uh, TPED, uh, there are uniform procedures across the member states in order to become a notified body. And NANDO is the electronic notification tool which is developed and managed by the Commission. And I've given a link there for NANDO on the slide. So if you go on to the NANDO website, you'll find a list of all notified bodies for every directive and for every member state. And every notified body has um, a unique number. And as an example there, I've shown a photograph of a gas cartridge um, which would be used in a camping stove. So the pie mark on that shows that uh, TPED applies, and 0029 is the notified body mark. 
So when I check on Nando, I can see that that uh, relates to a notified body in Belgium. Now, there's two things in particular um, to remember. First of all, TPED ensures the free movement of transportable pressure equipment within the EU, and that includes placing on the market, making available on the market, and also the use of transportable pressure equipment. And the second thing to remember is that certificates, and that could be for conformity or reassessment of conformity, and reports of inspection, and that covers the periodic or intermediate inspections or the exceptional checks issued by a notified body in one member state are valid in all member states. So the final thing then that I want to introduce is economic operators, and TPED defines six different economic operators. So if you're a manufacturing transportable pressure equipment or you have equipment designed or manufactured and you market it under your name or a trademark, then you're a manufacturer. If you have a written mandate from a manufacturer to act on their behalf, then you're an authorised representative. The next two, the importer and the distributor, are important. So an importer is someone who places transportable pressure equipment from a third country on the union market, and a distributor is someone other than a manufacturer or importer who makes transportable pressure equipment available on the market. The owner is someone who owns the transportable pressure equipment, and finally, then, the operator is someone who uses the uh, transportable pressure equipment. So I'm going to move on now to the notices that um, were, have been published by the European um, Commission. And as I said at the start of this webinar, there are two notices which are particularly relevant to transportable pressure equipment. The first is a general notice that was issued in March this year, and it covers industrial products, and TPE comes under the umbrella of industrial products. And it replaces an earlier notice that was issued by the Commission in 2018, and a questions and answers document published in 2019. The second notice is a specific notice on uh, transportable pressure equipment, which was issued in June this year, and it replaces an earlier notice that was issued in July last year. Now, if you're looking for copies of any of these notices, there are links to them on our website, and I've given the link there at the bottom of the slide. So to move on then to what's going to happen at the end of the uh, transition period, and as I said at the start of the webinar, there are three areas that need to be considered. So first of all, there's the legal situation, um, both in general terms for industrial products and also uh, specifically in relation to transportable pressure equipment. So in general terms, uh, what you need to think about is the identification of economic operators, and you also need to think about conformity assessment procedures and notified bodies. And then specifically in terms of transportable pressure equipment, um, the legal situation covers TPE that is placed on the union market. And it also covers um, TPE that's used exclusively between the EU and the UK and vice versa. The second area then that needs to be considered is the withdrawal agreement. And um, there are relevant separation provisions within that agreement. And there's two articles in particular um, which are relevant. Article 41 refers to TPE placed on the market, and Article 46 refers to the uh, transfer of information. And then the, the final area that I'll talk about then are the uh, rules that will apply in Northern Ireland um, under the uh, protocol on Ireland, Northern Ireland. So in the next couple of slides, I'll summarise what's covered in each of these areas. And I'm going to start off with the legal situation. And the first thing to think about then is the identification of economic operators. So after the end of the transition period, a manufacturer or an importer established in the UK will no longer be considered as an economic operator established in the Union. So as a result of that, if you're currently a distributor in Ireland for transportable pressure equipment coming from the UK, if you continue to do that after the end of the transition period, then you will become an importer. And what that means is you'll have to comply with the specific obligations of an importer, which are different um, to those of a distributor. And I'll come to that um, in the next slide. And if you recall from an earlier slide, the importer is placing transportable pressure equipment from a third country on the union market, whereas the distributor is someone other than a manufacturer or importer who's making the transportable pressure equipment available on the market. 
Um, and there's an important distinction to be made between placing on the market and making available on the market. So under TPED, placing on the market is the first making available of TPE on the union market. And making available on the market is any supply of TPE for distribution for use on the union market in the course of a commercial public service activity, whether in return for payment or free of charge. And the final thing that I want to mention on this slide is that UK-based authorised representatives will lose their status at the end of the transition period, regardless of when products were placed on the market. So what that means is that manufacturers need to ensure that from the end of the transition period, their authorised representatives have to be established in the EU. So to give you an idea of the impact of um, becoming an importer as opposed to a distributor, I just want to highlight the differences uh, between the two um, under TPED. So before placing TPE on the market, the importer needs to ensure that the equipment is pie marked. They need to indicate their name and the address at which they can be contacted either in or attached to the certificate of conformity. They need to ensure that the appropriate conformity assessment procedure has been carried out by the manufacturer and that the technical documentation has been drawn up, and they also need to keep a copy of the technical documentation. Now, if you compare that with the distributor, before making the TPE available on the market, the distributor needs to verify that the TPE is pie marked and that it has a certificate of conformity and contact address for the importer. So you can see there that the duties of an importer are much more onerous than for um, a distributor. So moving on then to the legal situation for conformity assessment procedures and notified bodies. And this information has come from uh, the general notice uh, on industrial products. And what is going to happen is at the end of the transition period, UK notified bodies will lose their status as EU notified bodies. So that means that they will be removed from the NANDO database and they won't be able to do any conformity assessment tasks. And so if products are to be placed on the market after the end of the transition period, you will need a certificate from an EU notified body. And this has implications then for uh, economic operators. And what it will mean is that economic operators will be required to apply for a new certificate, which is issued by an EU notified body. They will need to arrange for the transfer of the file and the corresponding certificate from the UK notified body to an EU notified body who would then take over the responsibility for that certificate. And the transfer of certificates from the UK notified body to the EU notified body needs to take place before the end of the transition period. And that should be on the basis of a contractual arrangement between the manufacturer, the UK notified body, and the EU notified body. The notified body certificate will need to be updated to mention that the certificate is under the responsibility of the EU notified body, and it will need to indicate both the old UK and the new EU notified body details um, and their identification numbers. And products manufactured after the transfer of certificate has taken place should be marked with the new, with the new EU notified body number, and it won't be possible to continue to use the UK notified, uh, notified, body, notified body number. So there's quite a bit um, in that. Specifically then in relation to uh, transportable pressure equipment and the legal situation regarding that, what we're talking about here in the first instance is TPE placed on the union market. So to ensure the continuity of the free movement of TPE, an EU notified body will be required to carry out the periodic inspections, the intermediate inspections and exceptional checks. And an EU notified body will also be required to carry out reassessments of conformity. Now, the last thing that I want to cover in terms of the legal situation at the end of the transition period relates to transportable pressure equipment, which is used exclusively between the EU and the UK and vice versa. So if you recall um, at the start of the webinar, um, I mentioned the TPE directive and the directive on the inland transport of dangerous goods. So under Article 1.4 of TPED, it says that it does not apply to TPE used exclusively for the transport of dangerous goods between member states and third countries if it's carried out in accordance with Article 4 of Directive 2008-68 EC. And Article 4 of that directive on the inland transport of dangerous goods says 
the transport of dangerous goods between member states and third countries shall be authorised insofar as it complies with the requirements of the ADR, RID and ADN unless otherwise indicated in the annexes. Now, what all of that means is that TPE which complies with the requirements of the ADR can normally continue to be accepted after the transitional period for the international carriage of dangerous goods between the UK and the EU and vice versa. Now, I know there's a lot to uh, consider in terms of what that means, and we do have quite a bit of information on our website which kind of outlines uh, various scenarios. And certainly, if you have any questions afterwards in terms of what that means, um, we'll be uh, happy to follow up on those. So, moving on then to the second area that's covered um, by the Commission is the relevant separation provisions of the withdrawal agreement. And as I said previously, there are two articles in particular uh, which need to be considered. Um, Article 41 refers to TPE placed on the EU or the UK market before the end of the transition period. And I think this is an important article. And what it means, for example, is that TPE sold by a UK-based manufacturer to a UK-based wholesaler, which means it's been placed on the market before the end of the transition period, based on a certificate issued by a notified body established in the UK, can be distributed further and used in the EU after the end of the transition period on the basis of that certificate. Now, I've just given one example there in terms of transportable pressure equipment, but if you look at the Commission Notice on Industrial Products, it gives a number of examples there which you may find uh, useful. And I suppose the other thing to say is I've given a definition previously in terms of placing on the market, and that definition comes from TPED. And if you look at the Commission Notice, there's a general definition for placing on the market which applies to industrial products in general. And there's also a number of other definitions which you may uh, find useful. So the second um, article which is uh, relevant under the withdrawal agreement is Article 46. And that refers to the transfer of information uh, related to conformity uh, assessments. And essentially, there's two parts to this. Um, Article 46.1 refers to the UK, and Article 46.2 refers to the EU. So under Article 46.1, the UK has to make sure that the relevant information held by a UK conformity assessment body is made available at the request of the certificate holder to an EU notified body. And then there's a mirror provision under Article 46.2, where it says that member states have to make sure that the relevant information held by any EU notified body is made available at the request of the certificate holder to a conformity assessment body established in the UK. So the final area then that I'm going to cover in this webinar is the rules that will apply in Northern Ireland under the protocol uh, on Ireland, Northern Ireland. And essentially, under this protocol, um, it will apply from the end of the uh, transition period, and it's subject to the periodic consent of the Northern Ireland Legislative Assembly. The initial period of application extends to four years after the end of the transition period. And under this protocol, the TPE directive applies to in the UK in respect of Northern Ireland. Now, it's at this point that the language used by the Commission changes from the UK and the EU to Great Britain, Northern Ireland and the EU. And what the notices um, say is that TPE placed on the market in uh, Northern Ireland needs to comply with the TPE directive. And then it goes on to further explain what that means. And essentially, uh, TPE manufactured in Northern Ireland and shipped to the EU is not an imported product for the purposes of labelling and identification of economic operators. And that comes from the General Notice on Industrial Products. A product uh, shipped from Great Britain to Northern Ireland is an imported product, and importers and authorised representatives may be established in Northern Ireland. So, in terms of notified bodies, um, there are three uh, situations to consider here um, in terms of the protocol. And I suppose you have notified bodies that are in the EU, um, in Great Britain, and Northern Ireland. And potentially, then, you could have certificates of conformity and reassessments of conformity. 
as well as the reports of inspections, whether that's for a periodic or an intermediate inspection or an exceptional check being issued by these notified bodies. And what uh, the Commission is telling us is that certificates and reports issued by an EU notified body are valid in Northern Ireland. And what that means is that TPE can be placed on the market and used in Northern Ireland based on certificates and reports from an EU notified body. Certificates and reports issued by a notified body in Great Britain are not valid in Northern Ireland. And what that means is that TPE cannot be placed on the market and used in Northern Ireland based on certificates and reports from a GB notified body. And then the third uh, scenario is uh, for a Northern Ireland notified body. And uh, certificates and reports issued by a notified body in Northern Ireland are valid only in Northern Ireland and not in the EU. So, where uh, transportable pressure equipment is certified by a notified body in Northern Ireland, uh, the UK NI mark needs to be affixed beside the PI mark to show that TPE can be placed on the market in Northern Ireland, but not in the EU. So, what does all of this mean? Um, so, I think the, the first question to ask is, what is your role as an economic operator? And if you're a manufacturer of, of transportable pressure equipment, then the certificates of conformity need to be issued by an EU notified body. You need to comply with the requirements for authorised representatives, and you may need to adapt your labelling as necessary. If you're an owner or operator of transportable pressure equipment, then you need to make sure that any certificates of reassessments of conformity and reports of inspections are issued by an EU notified body. If it's the case that your role as an economic operator changes from being a distributor to, uh, to an importer, then you need to know what your obligations are um, as a, uh, an importer. And so the final thing I would say is if you currently use a UK notified body, then at this stage I'd be asking what are your plans going forward, and particularly in relation to uh, periodic inspections of transportable pressure equipment. So we do have a guidance document on uh, transportable pressure equipment, and that's available on um, our website, um, www.hsa.ie, and uh, there's a particular ADR landing page, and you'll be able to download it from that. As I said earlier, we do have quite a bit of information on our website, on the Brexit section of uh, the website, and there's a particular link there for transportable pressure equipment, and we go through a number of things um, on that uh, page. Just as a reminder, we do have another webinar coming up on the 15th of October on uh, what you need to do if you source chemical products from the UK. And my colleagues, um, Ujella and Sinead, will be presenting at that. And um, as Ivana said earlier, um, all of these uh, webinars um, are recorded. So the presentations have been done previously on accreditation by Adrian and on industrial products by Alan will be made uh, available. So to finish then, um, I'd like to say thank you very much um, for your time. Um, I realise I've covered um, a lot of material um, in a short period, and I think the uh, Transportable Pressure Equipment Directive is particularly uh, complicated. If you have any questions, I'm happy to take them now, um, or if you have any questions after the webinar, um, please uh, feel free to get in touch, and we'll certainly do our best um, to answer those questions for you. Thank you very much.